the next molecule is pyrrole now pyrrole has nitrogen instead of oxygen in furan and nitrogen has only one lone pair now this lone pair will be going for resonance so altogether i have six pi electrons one from the lone two from the lone pair and four from the pi bond so it satisfies how the huckel rule the molecule is planar because all the atoms are sp2 hybridized so this molecule is aromatic likewise this the next structure is thiophene and this thiophene is also aromatic for the same reason that furan is aromatic in furan in thiophene you just have sulfur instead of oxygen the sulfur will also have two lone pair out of these two only one will go for resonance the other will be in the perpendicular plane the other will not go in resonance so in aromaticity you will count only these six electrons and when you count only these six electrons this molecule will satisfy huckel rule of, ha of having 4 and plus 2 pi electron so furan is aromatic as well this is how we look for aromaticity the next molecule is biphenyl you know when you have more than one ring you have to look for aromaticity individually in each of the ring when you have two rings if both the rings are aromatic the molecule is aromatic here you have two phenyl rings this ring is aromatic the other ring is aromatic as well so the whole molecule is aromatic when you have more than one ring you have to look for each of the ring the next structure is naphthalene now naphthalene is a benzoid kind of structure when two benzenes are merged into each other naphthalene is aromatic because both the rings is benzene like both the rings are benzene like and hence both the rings are aromatic when you have fused rings we have to look for aromaticity individually if both the rings are aromatic the molecule is aromatic in the next structure you have this you have this like benzene so this this ring is aromatic and if you see to the other ring this ring is like pyrrole and this is also aromatic so if you look individually one is like benzene is aromatic the other one is like pyrrole it is also aromatic so the whole molecule is aromatic when we have fused rings for aromaticity both the rings are aromatic then the molecule is aromatic similarly we have the next two molecules this is easy to analyze we have done enough enough problems on aromaticity now i hope things are very clear to all of us how we have to look for aromaticity now this is the first phase of aromaticity where we have learned to how to find whether the molecule is aromatic or not in nutshell i'll again boil things down all you have to lo look is you have to look for planarity the first condition is planarity if the molecule is planar then only it is eligible to be looked for aromaticity and anti aromaticity if the molecule is not planar straight away that is non aromatic if the molecule is planar then we have to look for huckel rule if it satisfies the huckel rule that means if molecule has 4n plus 2 number of pi electrons then the molecule will be aromatic that means the molecule has to be planar the molecule has to have 4n plus 2 number of pi electrons to be aromatic if the molecule is planar and has 4n pi electrons then the molecule is anti aromatic and if the molecule is not planar at all then it has to be non aromatic and suppose the molecule is planar but neither it has 4n plus 2 pi electrons or it has 4n pi electrons so in that case the molecule again will be non aromatic this prima facie we have learned how to find aromaticity next we'll see what kind of problems are asked in competitive exams and what kind of problems we are expected to know now let's start solving certain problems based upon the concept of aromaticity now to find the aromatic or non aromatic or anti aromatic state of a molecule that's one aspect in in exams like a triple e or wbj or in a pet level of exam we we get problems like to straight away f identify whether the molecule is aromatic or anti aromatic or non aromatic but in exams like je they don't directly ask you to identify the uh, aromatic or non aromatic or anti aromatic state of a molecule but they what they do is they indirectly check this concept of aromaticity suppose this problem is there in, uh, in the exam and they are asking to compare the rate of reaction there are three reactions given and they are asking us to compare the rate of reaction of each of uh, compare the rate of reaction of the given three reactions now first of all you have to see that um, what reaction is happening when we are putting alcl3 in a molecule having ccl bond so what this acl C alcl3 does is it breaks that ccl bond and generates carbocation now we will see in greater detail and the later course of this uh, course 
how AlCl3 breaks that bond and how a carbocation is formed. But for now, we have to just know this much that the AlCl3 breaks, breaks a CCl bond and it generates carbocation. And when CCl3 bond, when CCl bond will be broken and when a carbo when CCl bond will be broken, uh, then three carbocations will be generated like this. Now, if the carbocations formed are stable, they will be more fo they will form with a greater ease, and a large extent of reactant will move in the forward direction. Rate of reaction will depend upon the stability of the product that is formed. If the product formed is more stable, rate of reaction will be higher. If they are asking us to compare the rate of reaction, all we have to do is we have to compare the stability of the product. Now in the product, I have three carbocations. If I'm able to compare the stability of those three carbocations, then I can give the order of rate of reaction as well. Now in the first carbocation, there will be only hyperconjugation from two alpha carbon. In the second carbocation, there'll be resonance and there'll be hyperconjugation as well. In the third carbocation, you may be tempted to say that there'll be resonance with two pi bonds. And that is correct. There'll be resonance with two pi bonds. So the obvious answer that anyone will be tempted to give is rate of reaction in third case, rate of reaction in third case will be highest, followed by second, followed by first. And this is a wrong answer. This is a wrong answer because we are, we have been mistaken upon anti-aromaticity. Now we have to discuss this at this very stage, even when you have resonance, but if that resonance leads to anti-aromaticity, then there's a huge amount of unstability inherent in that molecule. Resonance brings about stability, but only one, th there's, we have to be cautious only when there is anti-aromaticity in the molecule. If at all there's anti-aromaticity, then resonance brings unstability. This is the only case that we have to be cautious on whenever there is resonance. Otherwise, in general, resonance always brings about stability. Now, the explanation of this is not in the scope of our course. This comes from molecular orbital or theorem. But uh, at the later course, we will see a slight glimpse into this, why this should happen at all. But at this stage, we, all we will do is we'll just know this. If there is anti-aromaticity, it brings about huge amount of unstability. In the third carbocation, if you see, this third carbocation is an anti-aromatic carbocation. In the previous lecture, we have identified certain amounts of molecules, their aromatic or anti-aromatic state, and this molecule appeared there in the list. And we have already identified that the third carbocation is anti-aromatic. So if at all it is anti-aromatic, it is highly unstable. And if it is highly unstable, it will not be formed. And if it is not formed, then the rate of reaction forming this intermediate will be very, very less. So the rate of reaction in the third case will be very, very less because of anti-aromaticity. This you have to take care of. Whenever there's a cyclic ring, whenever there's a pi bond, you have to think once whether this is aromatic or this is anti-aromatic. If at all that is anti-aromatic, that carbocation will not be formed at normal condition at room temperature. So the rate of reaction, the reaction producing that carbocation will be very, very less. The rate of that reaction will be very less. So the rate of third reaction has to be very less. So uh, the third reaction will have the least rate. This we have to take care of. We don't have to be, we, ju we don't just look at resonance and we don't, we don't just attempt to say that since there is resonance, it is highly stable. Resonance brings about stability, but if it is anti-aromatic, then that then resonance does not brings about stability, rather it brings about unstability. So the correct answer would be the rate of reaction will be highest in either one or e two. In the first intermediate, you only have hyperconjugation. There is no resonance. In the second intermediate, you have resonance. So the obvious answer is the second intermediate is most stable, followed by first, and then comes the third. This is the stability order, and the same order will be for rate of reaction as well, because the, if the intermediate is more stable, then the rate of reaction will be more, because that intermediate will be formed with greater ease. So this is the order of rate of reaction.